you're not human anymore at the end of this process. At the end of the process, you cease to be human. The climate crisis at some fundamental level is a soil crisis. Fully embracing myself is organic matter, just something to rot and decay. wondering how I got here, moments away from having my dead body composted. Honestly, I blame my friend, Katrina Spade. We need to go back to 2011, when Katrina was working on her Masters of Architecture. Her thesis was on how we handle dead bodies in crowded urban areas, since conventional burials, and even cremation, carry pretty high environmental costs. Green burial, where the body is put directly into the soil in a simple shroud, was the ideal solution, and has the added bonus of being what many cultures have done with their dead for tens of thousands of years. But land is at a premium in highly populated areas. When was the last time you saw a Target, or a Walmart, or a skyscraper torn down to reclaim the land as a green burial cemetery? A girl can only dream. This was when Katrina learned that farmers had been composting livestock for decades. That's right, composting. Like that sweet soil-generating pile in your backyard, but breaking down a dead human body. A revolution was born. By 2015, the first donor bodies were being composted in prototype studies at the Department of Forensic Anthropology at Western Carolina University. Here's me carrying wood chips up to the compost pile. I'm a bit of a whiner. Sue me. I documented this early part of the process in my book, From Here to Eternity. Today, 10 years and many prototypes and legalization attempts later, here we are visiting the facility just south of Seattle, Washington. Katrina, kitty cat. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Ta-da. That's, can you even is, believe it? I, you know I can, because you oh, are, thank you. you're an intense person and you're <laughs> dogged and you weren't going to let it fail. Persistence, you might Persistence. say. Persistence. Yes. Here's something we've been talking about since the very beginning. The criticism, I don't know if it's a criticism, but the pushback saying, why do you need to create a facility like this? Sure. You can just naturally bury. Oh, yeah. And you always said, this is not a replacement for natural burial. It's a replacement for cremation. It's a replacement for what's happening in heavily populated areas. That's totally accurate. Well, as you well know, cremation is more than 50% of people in the U.S. right now, right? And skyrocketing. It's the default. It's less expensive. It's more available. It's a big one. And it feels like it might be more ecologically friendly. But what if instead of cremation being the default, human composting was the default? That's the world the liberals no. want. <laughs> That's exactly right. You've always seen Recompose as a combination of ritual and science and technology. Sometimes that dichotomy is a lot of fun. Like this is like a spaceship, but also it's like the forest floor. So I get really kind of nerded out about that. It's stuff. like the forest floor in space. In a spaceship. Think about it, bro. Whoa. We're going to start with the ritual aspect of it, which is the laying in ceremony. Now, we Going thought in. about having a dead body made of pillows to show this example, but why use pillows when we can use me? So this has always been inspired by two things, natural burial, and home funerals, right? And natural burial and home funerals are all about participating. How do you get the family to be as close to the process as they want to be? And sometimes they might not even know they want until... And you then know, you force them into it. <laughs> you, no, you never force them into it. Oh, game. no, yeah, you don't do that. No, never. But what we want to do is set up the opportunities as much as possible for that extra participation. And so what we've done thus far at Recompose is make the, the sort of practical piece of it the body is out here and it needs to go into the vessel how can we make sure we mark that moment and turn that moment into a ritual at the laying in ceremony they play music the person loved everything from the grateful dead to nina simone Smokey robinson to celine dion 
One decedent had all the staff wearing their gothiest band t-shirts and built a playlist of all his favorite music. Joy Division, VNV Nation, Nine Inch Nails, New Order, a man after my own dark heart. A slideshow was projected, including moments from the German Gothic music festivals that meant so much to him. How's that for a truly modern American funeral? Families often bring clippings from their own garden and are fascinated by the process itself, this melding of science and spirituality that's happening here. There is an emerging ritual combining the physical action of laying on the wood chips and plants with the knowledge that the body is taking a new place in the carbon cycle. We've heard from families that they really were surprised at how comforted they felt by this action, which I think is beautiful. And when our services team does this, they talk about where the plants came from, how they fit into the carbon cycle. Any time you'd like to say now, some nice things about me. I know I overuse the deaf ASMR reference a lot, but getting delicate wood chips and plants placed over you over an organic cotton shroud is very relaxing. I think this is nice too because this is the closest to how I actually want to go out. Just surrounded by, by nature and my body allowed to gloriously decompose. Once the whole family has been able to have this lovely ritual around the person, the person is loaded into one of these vessels and that's when the journey really begins. Yeah, for sure. Microbes break the body and the plant material down in about a month. And they spend a month in here. They spend one month in this hotel for the dead. That's what I like to think of it, it as. It kind sometimes. of looks like a Japanese capsule hotel. Yeah. I mean, here's bit. the thing. I just, as an aside, Caitlin, I don't know how many people are afraid that they might be buried alive or cremated alive. They think he's dead and buried. They're only half right. But we can 100% take care of that fear for you because if you were loaded into one of these vessels, number one, well, you know you're cocooned in wood chips and straw. And what's happening inside that vessel is purely air is being pumped through. So you're actually like probably pretty warm, cozy, comfortable, and got plenty of air to breathe. And if you woke up, you could just knock on one of these and I can promise you our staff would open the door real quick <laughs> and get you out. Well, so. it's like, it really does separate the men from the boys, the living and the dead, because if you are alive, you're a living person with some air and a bed of wood chips. Right. If you're dead, you decompose and turn into soil. And That's those are sort of your only two options. So true. So right now, as we speak, we have those microbes on us. They're in the wood chips, they're in the air. And so you're absolutely right. The only thing that makes that process start is the fact of the dead. That's really cool. Let's take you through the magical mystery trip that is being composted after you die. BK! It's worth mentioning that the individual capsule pods you see here are a far cry from the central core that was Katrina's original idea. One giant multi-story compost pile you'd slowly move down over several weeks. After the laying in, the body is surrounded with wood chips, alfalfa, and straw, and placed into the vessel and covered with more plant material. For 30 days, the body and plant material get cozy in the vessel, letting those hungry microbes get to work, breaking down the organic matter. You no know, decay happens naturally with time. As the body transforms into soil, it changes on a molecular level. Pathogens, pharmaceuticals, chemotherapy drugs are all neutralized in the process reduced to well below what the EPA considers safe levels. After the 30 days are up, about one cubic yard of nutrient-dense soil comes forth from the vessel. The composting process breaks down most bones, but if there are fragments remaining larger than one centimeter, they are processed in a cremulator, commonly used after cremations. The recompose operators also screen for non-organic items in the body, like hip implants, and if any are found, they're recycled. The soil is then allowed to cure before it can be used in gardens, forests, or conservation land. Pretty much anywhere that could use some rich, yummy soil. 
Sometimes mushrooms even grow from the soil at this stage. Rules the ground with good things that help make new trees grow. I will say that when I was when I was younger and I was starting this work, I thought, oh my gosh, human compost is going to be the best. It's going to be way better than any other compost. And our soil scientist, Dr. Carpenter Boggs, was like, no, it's actually, it's pretty good. It's good compost. <laughs> but there's nothing special about it just because it's human. And I was like, what? That's, How can it not be amazing? That's actually really funny because it touches on so much, even in the one body disposition option where we're like, I am nothing. Let me decompose. Let me go back to the land. We're still like, but humans are special, right? But humans are very but special. But human compost yeah. like, will be the absolute 100% best. best compost. And then the scientist is like, actually, no, it is your organic material is no better than, I don't know, I'm making her German. When you put the body into the vessel, suddenly it begins its transformation. And that is mind blowing, really, when you think about you're going to cease to be human and become soil instead. Because you really are, you're not human anymore at the end of this process. At the end of the process, you cease to be human. Eventually, you just let go of that humanness, which is pretty intense. Decay. Yeah. 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 Wow. That was great. Now we're going to jump ahead. You're going to take us into the back and show us a little bit of the testing area and the final product. Yeah. A couple things happen after folks have been through the cure bin, after they've been through the vessel. At that point, we need to do testing of the soil and make sure that it meets the requirements set by the state of Washington. Did the state of Washington decide on the specifications? Like, how do they even know what they were looking for? Very good question. Luckily, there's been decades of work by compost experts to say, what makes safe compost? They'd be able to tell you, like, oh, there's a little too much humid in your compost. I don't know that their pinkies would go up, but maybe. <laughs> they're, they're drinking evil, evil regulatory tea. Recompose tests the soil for fecal coliform, arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury, selenium, ensuring the soil is safe. After the process is over and you have these essentially hundreds of pounds of soil, how many families want to take it all home and how many families are like hey we want to take a small amount home and then donate the rest right now we're at about 50 50 so 50 percent of our families come here with a trailer or a truck and we put that cubic yard of soil which is several hundred pounds into that truck and off they go i'm just trying to imagine showing up with my truck and picking up an entire truck bed of yeah. my mom. I mean, that's the really cool thing. I, I think our early clients are really like doing this with us. Like they're creating this with us and they're saying like, yeah, we, okay, that's new, <laughs> like, but like we're gonna do it. And so I just think there's a kind of a bravery actually of the, of the actual people who are joining with us to do this in the early side of things. In the legalization process, there's really only been two groups that have come out against it, the Catholics and the funeral directors. Cool, yeah. Actually, let's talk legalization because though it's not exactly the most thrilling, it's one of the most important parts of the whole project. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. In most states in the US, there are limited options for what happens to your body after you die. Burial, cremation, donation to science. Some states have a third option called alkaline hydrolysis or aquamation. Washington, bless their hearts, was the first state to legalize natural organic reduction in 2019. Then in 2021, Oregon and Colorado legalized human composting. In California, Recompose and our organization, the Order of the Good Death, have been working with an assembly member for two years on legalizing the process. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. While passing a new law may sound glamorous, in a pandemic, it's a lot of waiting around on a conference line for hours, only to have tech issues maybe get in the way of your testimony. Hi, this is Caitlin Doty. I think that I was gonna speak first. Is that okay? Oh, okay, no. Nope. But we persevered and are so pleased to announce. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No. So we just found out that the bill to legalize the process in California has been shelved for the year. We Over. were a hundred percent sure it was gonna pass. Hundred. What's more? What's higher than a hundred? Hundred two percent. That's the top. That is the top. We were hundred percent sure. 
I mean, maybe we're too deep in this that we cannot see the forest for the human composted supported trees, but I've, it was it was so bipartisan in its support. We had no question hundreds of letters, calls in everywhere. There was no question that that was something the community wanted in California. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Over the years, people have said, yeah, Katrina, human composting, that's a great idea, but you know, it's not legal anywhere. I told you that. <laughs> you told me that. And so the hardest thing that you're gonna face is trying to legalize this, this human disposition option that doesn't exist yet. And so I thought they might be right. That does sound rather complicated, but to be honest, like policy change has gone pretty well so far. And part of the reason is because in Washington, in Oregon, and in Colorado, all of where this process is now legal, we've seen this broad bipartisan support. You find farmers are as excited about it as Seattleite environmentalists. And so again, that just is another reason I thought California was gonna pass this year. It was our year. And so it's extra disappointing because I think I was on a little bit of like a yeah, we got this. This mm. isn't the hardest thing. Dominoes, mm. knock them down. Well, and that's the trick is that we won't really ever know why it didn't pass this year. And we I, won't. <laughs> I have some theories. Only Caitlin will know why it didn't pass this year. With Governor Gavin Newsom facing a September 14th recall election, fellow Democrats in the legislature appeared to protect him from having to sign or veto some controversial measures. He will not have to decide whether California should legalize mushrooms, ecstasy, and other psychedelic drugs, nor will he have to weigh in on the ethical debate over turning people into garden compost after they die. That's a problem right there, because what's the ethical debate? We ought to come back next year, and we have to make it completely undeniable. Undeniable. We have more letters than they've ever seen. It's gonna be a circus. Let, make them look me in the eyes and not vote this bill through me in the eyes, representative so-and-so. I want to be composted. So yeah, it's not easy to legalize a new death care option. First, California shelved the bill because of COVID, and then the next year they shelved it to not seem too weird. <laughs> Bills in New York and Hawaii have been killed due to disagreements and pushback from conventional funeral homes. In Hawaii's case, natural organic reduction now can't be performed until July 1st, 2050. 2050. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. If this frustrates you, talk to your friends and family about why this matters. And when it comes up as a bill in your state, call or write your legislators to let them know you support consumers having more choices for their end of life. But I know I'll be a law someday. If my mother came here and she was naturally organically reduced and I had a little box garden in my yard but could not take a truckload of her home, you would give me something like this. Absolutely. We kind of assume most people are going to want a little bit. And so this is a half gallon of a person's soil. The bones have broken down, the flesh is broken down, and then the DNA has even broken down at this point. There is a cycle here in the Pacific Northwest. Nutrients in the soil allow trees to grow very fast and very big. When they die and fall, their elegant tree carcasses produce more organic material and nutrients, enriching the soil and allowing more big, tall trees to grow. But here at Bell's Mountain, after over a century of continual clear cutting and no restoration, the soil was depleted. If only there was some kind of nutrient dense soil to repair the land. Do you see where this is going? This is Elliot Rasnick, the director of the nonprofit here. So this is it. This is it. This is almost all of the soil that has been brought here. We've welcomed 28 people onto site. When you arrive with the family here at the pile, like you arrived with me today, what is their reaction? It's been extraordinary. One of the times a woman leapt out of the cart, screaming her loved one's name, joyously leaping over uh, and, and rushing into into touch the pile, which typically uh, it takes a little prodding for someone to want to touch the soil. Really? Uh, I just came stuck my hand just... right in, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I know why we're here and I know what makes it special compost, 
but I think it really takes having this be your loved one's compost to feel the kind of intimate, almost spiritual connection to it. Because, you know, another reason it's something that's just occurring to me now is that I've spent so much time around cremated remains or green burial graves. And I do so associate that with people, but my brain is not yet able to see this as 28 people. Yeah. And in some ways that makes sense because it's not really them. It's been so biologically changed that it's not them anymore, but the same could be said for cremated remains. So it's almost like we just need more time to understand this as a memorial. Mm. Well, I think in the name itself is, is some of that in the sense that they accidentally arrived at this name of Nor. Um, natural organic reduction. Natural organic reduction, and neither human nor inhuman, neither purely spiritual nor purely material. And I think the way that we handle the deliveries and the way that we'll continue to handle the material really reveals some of that profundity. This creek behind us is a huge part of what the natural organic reduction is ultimately going to be used for. Th that's right. We're standing roughly in the middle of the first restoration project that we know of to be using soil made from people to supercharge its impact. I like that we know of. Like there are all <laughs> sorts of like human soil secret <laughs> conservation <laughs> projects going on across the world, but it shan't be spoken of. <laughs> we may have to lay this out for folks a little bit, but tell me why salmon need such cool water, other than they're divas. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> salmon. <laughs> the divas of the Northwest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so salmon face so many threats, but one of the most significant threats that salmon face is that they only spawn in cold water. And so as the planet increasingly warms, cold water for salmon to spawn is increasingly threatened. With this restoration project, you are trying to get rid of invasive species along the stream and replace it with native species that will shade it. How are you doing that? That's right. So the, the plan here will be removing blackberry. It's about a 27 acre project. Blackberry. <laughs> That's right. So of course, blackberry is only the second significant European invader to threaten this land. And, and really only came here because of the first significant year. Oh, is that, is that shade to white people? <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's like white people and blackberries, <laughs> the two greatest threats to this land. That's right. Makes sense. So the first European descended invaders who came here uh, cleared all of this land. And so there aren't the species diverse, age diverse shade that will last for a long time. That the salmon require. That the salmon require. That's so right. you're clearing it out, planting conifers, that are supercharged by the compost. That's exactly right. So with your dead body, you're supercharging conifers to provide a canopy for salmon to comfortably breed in cool water. That's so romantic. Isn't it? I love it because everybody, I think that we kind of get stuck on the idea of I'm going to be a tree, which they are quite literally. They're going to boost up a conifer, but it's so much more than that. That's right. And I think part of the incredible genius of what Recompose is up to is that it's not, your body isn't in one particular place, right? We saw the pile of soil is commingled of, of many, many people. So you're not a tree, you're a forest. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That should be on their website. <laughs> you're not a tree, you're a forest. <laughs> It's incredibly oppressively hot today, although it's nice here in the shade, but it's supposed to get up to 108 degrees. We say all the time, sure, no death care option, no green death care option can solve climate change. But mentally, I think there's something that happens when you choose this. My sense is that the climate crisis at some fundamental level is a soil crisis. There isn't the soil uh, on this planet right now to hold the carbon that plants can sequester. 
And so the possibility of a transformation of our relationship with biomass that and, and the scariest biomass to think about using for life is our own bodies. And if we can change the way we think about how we use this biomass, if we can honor the end of this biomass as, as necessarily something to be used for good to build up the soil, then I think we do stand a chance to at some level mitigate what's coming. I think about that all the time. I think my main transition to being more comfortable with death was fully embracing myself as organic matter. It's just something to rot and decay, and that it is the absolute least that we can do as humans to give ourselves back to the land that we have just rapaciously taken from our entire lives. Thank you. So in the very last soil delivery, the fourth delivery, one of the folks who was helping to unload the soil from the dump truck, it's a meticulous process making sure that uh, every little bit of nor gets out of the dump truck, all the nooks and crannies. And as we finished getting all of the soil out, uh, we saw in the corner of our eyes, uh, his eight-year-old daughter was dancing and playing, doing cartwheels in the soil. And we all thought, are we supposed to think this isn't right? But it was so right. And as she was dancing and playing, doing cartwheels, we heard her chanting, it's life and it's death. 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 Oh, I'm tearing up just thinking about that because mm. think of what our culture does to that little girl. Think about the messages that it gives her that that kind of relationship and celebration of life and death is taboo or unacceptable. How dare we tell that <laughs> to that little girl? We should all be cartwheeling through the compost. Thank you. We should all be cartwheeling through the compost. We are pleased to announce the months-long redesign of the Order of the Good Death. If you're interested in green death options and technology, our work to legalize these options, and how you might get involved, visit us at orderofthegooddeath.com. And thank you, as always, to the patrons who make all this work possible. Hey, hey guys! Back on my bullshit. Hey, this is us talking. <laughs> I'm always about leaning on counters. <laughs> Welcome to Advice from Katrina. <laughs> it's not ice cream. This is very accurate. What's happening right now is extremely accurate. <laughs> and then I lay my head upon the corpse's chest. Because you're so sad. It's a very um, sort of bizarre wellness retreat. Those socks freak me out. I just want you to know. I was like, really? I believe it. That sounds like the law. Can be even more aggressively useful for the environment than a natural burial. Aggressively useful? Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I just, I just roll past, <laughs> I love it. past gardens like, and fling oh, right. human soil. Aggressively useful compost. Just do it. Just do it. Just, just get it done. Just, but yeah, just typey type. Do it. Make a new thing. It's fine. Come on. <laughs> get with it. You just live in perpetual dappled sunshine. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what is plants? Comp compost forest. Beautiful restoration <laughs> forest. Compost. That's exactly right. We got it. Chip chop. I think that's good. <laughs>